Welcome to the latest edition of Access All Areas Explorers. We're here in London's Victoria Park for AEG promoted All Points East. Today we'll be meeting the team at Peppermint Bars, who collectively will be serving around 160,000 drinks. First of all, we're going to speak to Adam Hebkinstall, the CEO and founder. Adam, uh, co-founder of Peppermint. Uh, we're here at All Points East uh, this afternoon. Uh, we've been running since 2003, so 20 years in the business this October. Hi there, I'm Alex Brook, one of the founders of Peppermint Bars and Events. Hi, I'm Lindsay Wollaston. I am Vice President and General Manager of European Festivals here at AG. And so I look after all um, operations, marketing, um, talent programming, uh, the full spectrum um, of what we do here across BST Hyde Park, um, All Points East, Forwards Festival and uh, Rock on Seine in Paris. We're here in this lovely environment backstage at All Points East. How long have you worked with uh, AG Presents and particularly this event? Uh, so with AEG, yeah, I think it's probably um, over 13, 12 or 13 years, I think. I think one of the first shows we did with them was, uh, was Rock Ness in Inverness in Scotland uh, back in 2010. So yeah, about 13 years. So say for us, A, it's hugely important that we work with uh, contractors, show partners that are um, very much sharing in our AEG values. And one of the biggest points for us is sustainability. Um, so we've been working with Peppermint really closely. Um, what we look for in that is a true commitment, um, genuine efforts and commitment to improving our position and our initiatives here, um, investment and a true passion for it. So um, making sure we share those values is hugely important to us. And uh, sustainability wise, Peppermint have been amazing at staying across uh, the forefront of um, what they do as a bar operator, which given the scale of our audiences and the scale at which we're operating our bars and our food and drink, that we recognise we've got a real opportunity to have an impact, a great impact by focusing on those areas. Well, you know, at this show particularly, we work very closely with AEG, who are also on their own sustainability journey as, as we are. And, and uh, you know, uh, you'll, you'll see a, a lot of work that goes behind the scenes in terms of the planning and preparation for an event like this. But uh, fundamentally, uh, you're absolutely right. No single use plastic at all on site. Um, every single product you see available from the bars is, is fully recyclable or compostable. Um, there is a closed waste system on, on site where, where people are encouraged to place their waste into you know, the correct receptacles and that waste is ultimately taken uh, and, uh, and recycled. Um, the most important thing is, is that we're absolutely on the same page as the waste contractor and that they're really clear about exactly what uh, different pieces of waste go into that stream and that they are 100% compatible and can you know fully recycle or compost um, the items that are served behind the bar. But another big part of that as well is working with A Green Future who Peppermint already work with but also AG who Showers also work with. Um, so what we look at is the stuff that we can do internally in terms of how many drinks we've sold and the weights and the trucks and all that stuff is great because we have control of that. But another really good resource that we have is all of the briefing documents that we can send out to every single member of staff on the ground. At some days at all points East, we have upwards of 500 staff. So any information that we can give them that is a snapshot of how they can help is a really, really valuable tool. So that's one thing that a greener future will send, but also something that me and Carl will send to our core team. Because the more we can champion the people on the ground to really be passionate about sustainability, it will just help us get to our net zero goal also as well help the planet. So another part of the planning for all points east that we look at, which is again part of our net journey zero that we're looking at. So Carl has the job of tracking basically every single truck that comes in and every single drink that is sold so we can see what impact we're having. We would really work very hard on, on trying to ensure the, the overall carbon footprint of our operation is as low as possible as well. As you can appreciate, every bar has to have an Arctic lorry parked behind it. You know, we work really hard on uh, how to reduce the number of Arctic lorries on site, which in turn reduces the number of the, the amount of power that we need on site. 
Um, of course, everyone loves a draft pint of beer, but it's not always needed in every single bar environment. It creates a lot of wastage in terms of CO2. The carbon footprint of a draft bar is much bigger than a, than a package bar, for example. So it's really important that we, that we work really closely with, with our partners, uh, AEG, but also on all of our events in terms of ensuring that there's a right balance between what people really want in terms of the products on the bars, but also trying to make sure that that carbon footprint is kept as low as possible. Over the last 20 years, Peppermint has managed to build a fantastically diverse group of individuals who've come together to help us deliver the range of services that we do today across festivals, venues, pop-ups, food, technology, and now obviously on our sustainability journey. It's that diverse group of people who've enabled us to achieve the success we've seen in the last 20 years. We've got a great core team across all of our sites where all our people work collaboratively across festivals and venues. They all get to work in each kind of environment based on their skill sets. And we've had some guys that have been with the business for 15 years, We've got a really high retention rate, where people love coming back summer after summer. And now we're able to offer people work throughout the whole year as well. We are like the back of the events, so the office, and we work very hard to support our teams at the venues. So I'm, I'm supporting the team at the head office to make sure that we have everything uh, to support the team, uh, from having the, the fresh stock, and like uh, from water supply, the events, and that the spirit is up and high for, you know, to come and work every day. So Peppermint Frog, these last 20 years really has been trying to sort of raise the standard of the drinks available to the public at events and festivals. Um, one of the things you guys do is uh, fresh cocktails. Uh, what's the, why is there so much of a focus on fresh cocktails? I mean obviously I'd imagine they taste better but what's the thinking? Well I just think people nowadays have got more choice. They they want different choices. They go to lots of bars. They have, there's a massive range and they go to bars. There's more cocktail bars around more availability, you go into a shop and there's more availability of different products, different spirits, different juices, people experiment at home, so they know what's out there. I mean, 15 years ago I came into this path because at festival and there was literally only pints of beer and wine that you could have. And just to be able to offer people different drinks and also different sort of like non-alcoholic and low alcohol cocktails as well, so it's a range of things. And so, how many events do you run or uh, work on like this, um, you know, every summer? I mean, yeah, typically in a sort of summer season, we look at um, somewhere in the region of 30 to 40 large scale music festivals. Um, we, you know, as a business, we have always traditionally been a very seasonal business, as in very much focused during the summer. Um, over the past few years, we have managed to spread out a bit, so we are busy um, during the winter as well as the summer, and we have uh, various venues that we work in and so forth. But yeah, it's around 40, 40 festivals or so that we you know, we start you know, end of end of May uh, all the way through till sort of third week in September is kind of our last big greenfield show. Sure, an event like this one. I mean, how many? bars do you have and roughly speaking how many how many i love my statistics how many drinks um you know will you sell over the period yeah i mean um you know from a from a from a size point of view i mean the great thing about this event is that um it kind of shrinks and grows according to you know the crowd and demographic um i mean it's a forty-five thousand capacity uh, event site so um, we, we can have in excess of five to six hundred staff here on a, on a, on a peak day. Uh, we've got about 25 bars uh, here, um, uh, plus about five, five or six sort of backstage bars of around um, behind the stages and in you know, VIP areas and, and artist areas and so forth. So yeah, quite a big operation. It's amazing for me to think that 20 years ago today, my business partner and I, Adam, was sat in a small caravan in a field in Henley, starting out on what has been the most exciting journey that we could ever have imagined when it comes to being here tonight at Between the Bridges celebrating our 20th anniversary after what's undeniably been one of our most exciting, fun and diverse 
summers to date.